Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about using should. I'm going to explain using should for the past and for the future. So I'm going to introduce how you make statements and questions for past tense use of should. And I'm going to talk about the same thing for future tense uses of should. So let's begin. I want to start this lesson by talking about the past tense version. When we use should in the past, in a positive statement, we do it to express regret. So regret means a sorry feeling or a sad feeling. So it expresses regret for something that did not happen. So this is a key point here. Yes, it's a positive statement, but we're talking about something that did not happen and we, we feel sad about it. So to visualize this, I've created a timeline here with the past over here, now the present, our conversation, and future. So if you can imagine, uh, when we make positive statements with should in the past tense, we can imagine it's something that did not happen. So it's before the present, before now, did not happen, and we feel sad about it. So, when we want to make a sentence like this, we can use a pattern such as this one. This is a very basic pattern. We can use subject plus should plus have and then the past participle form of a verb. So, this part right here, this makes it a past tense statement. We'll see this is quite different when we're making future tense statements. So, I'll show some examples of this in just a moment. Let's compare this then to the negative form. When we make a negative statement using should in the past, it expresses regret, again that sad feeling, it expresses regret for something that happened. So yes, it's a negative sentence, but this action happened, it was real. So again, to imagine this visually, in the past, something actually did happen. So I used a check mark here. This is a true event, a real event. And we regret, or there's some kind of sad feeling about that thing. So when we make sentences in the negative with this grammar point, we can use subject again, plus should. Here we'll use should not and then complete this pattern with have and the past participle verb. So the only change here is using not when we make the negative. There's nothing here. So this is the basic kind of uh, statement structure for past tense statements with should. Then I've added here um, a simple question structure, a simple information question structure here. We can use a WH question. WH means who, what, when, where, why, how, those kinds of things. So we use a WH question with should plus our subject, have, and the past participle verb. So I'll explain a few examples of this in just a moment. With this, I want to continue to the next part over here, which is pronunciation tips. So you've noticed perhaps that should and have and should not have, um, when people are speaking, these become reduced or these become much shorter. So you'll hear these two used most commonly. We don't really say should have or should not have so clearly. When we're making positive sentences, the most common reduction is this should've, should've. So should've, this is should apostrophe V E, should have, should have. This should comes from should have. So this have, it's like we drop the ha part and just use the v sound. So should have, should have. To make it even shorter, you'll often hear people use shoulda, shoulda. So this a uh sound is like taking only this a here in have, but it just becomes very short. I shoulda. I should not is the negative form of this. So let's continue on. As I've just said, shouldn't have, we contract this should not here. Should not contracts to shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't have. But to make it even shorter, we often say shouldn't, 
shouldna. So positive shoulda, negative shouldna, shouldna, shouldna. So let's take a look at some examples that use these patterns. First, let's look at two positive statements. I should have studied more. I should have studied more. And we should have gone to the store. We should have gone to the store. So here we see should is followed by have and then the past participle form of the verb. In this case, studied and gone. So this shows us that we have a past tense statement. These statements express regret. So when we're speaking quickly, we probably won't say I should have studied more or we should have gone to the store. I would say I should have studied more and we should have gone to the store. So as I explained, this pronunciation is the most common one. Should have. I should have studied more. We should have gone to the store. Let's compare this to two negative statements then. She shouldn't have done that. So here I've already reduced this, shouldn't. She shouldn't have done that. And you shouldn't have had so much to drink. So again, these two express regret for something that did happen. So in both of these sentences, that, something, whatever this is, this was a bad thing. The speaker thinks this was bad. In the second sentence as well, the speaker thinks this was a bad choice. So expressing regret about something that happened. Then, again, as I talked about here, I would reduce this even more. I've got shouldn't in both of these sentences, but in everyday speech, we would probably say she shouldn't have done that and you shouldn't have had so much to drink. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have had so much to drink. So this shouldna and shoulda, these are key pronunciation points that will help you um, kind of in your listening and also to help you sound a little more natural. Okay, let's finish this part by looking at two questions then. First, what should we have done differently? What should we have done differently? And where should we have gone? Where should we have gone? So both of these, they maintain, they keep that feeling of regret. When you're using a question like this, you're asking about something it would have been better to do in the past. So it's a question. That means uh, an action happened, yes. And these questions are about improvements to that action. So here, for example, what should we have done differently? What should we have done differently means, for example, the speaker or a group um, here speaking made a decision, but perhaps it was not the right decision or it was a bad decision. So the speaker is asking, what choice, what should we have done differently is like saying, what do you think would have been better in the past? What should we have done differently? Same thing in the second sentence. Where should we have gone? Where should we have gone? So maybe the speaker went to the wrong location and they're asking for advice in the past. Of course, we cannot change this, but this is actually a common way that we ask for like future advice. So it's recognizing, oh, I made a mistake in the past. So maybe next time, I have a similar situation, what do you recommend? But we use this kind of grammar to ask these sorts of questions. Like, okay, in this case, where should I have gone? What should we have done differently? So that you can think about that for the future. So these are situations where you might use questions like these. Okay, with that then, with past tense, let's move on to looking at future uses of should. So let's begin again with positive statements. So when we make a positive statement with should, we're expressing advice actually. So we don't have that regret feeling here. We're expressing advice and the speaker thinks this advice is a good idea. So again, to visualize it here, we're looking at a different point in time. With the past, we were talking about something that finished or something that did not happen. Here, we're talking about an action in the future. So here is my conversation now. When we make a positive statement with should, we're talking about something the speaker thinks is a good idea in the future, an upcoming thing. So I've marked it with a check. 
To make a positive statement, a simple pattern is your subject plus should, and here the present tense form of your verb. So in past tense, we use this past participle form. Here we're using the present tense form of the verb, so no verb change is necessary here. Now, let's compare this to a negative statement. So a negative statement with should also expresses advice, yes, but the speaker thinks it's a bad idea. This is a bad idea. So positive, good idea, negative, bad idea with should. Then to make a negative statement, an advice statement about the future, we use subject plus should not and again the present tense form of the verb. So you'll notice again this is very similar to the past tense form. Just keep in mind we also don't use have. There's no have in present or rather future forms of this. Okay, then again let's finish with a simple question pattern too. When we make a question, like an information question, we can begin with this WH question word plus should, our subject, and then the present tense form of the verb. So this is a key point for um, the difference between these two. We're using different verb forms for future and past tenses. Okay, let's move along then to some pronunciation points here. This one is much shorter um, than the past tense version, but uh, when we're using should uh, to make a positive statement, there's not really a change, should. Uh, here though, I would recommend definitely use the reduced shouldn't, shouldn't. It's going to sound more natural than should not. So just a quick point here, try to use this shouldn't. Okay, so let's look at some examples that use this. Let's start with some positive expressions. First, you should find a new job. You should find a new job and he should work harder. He should work harder. So you'll notice here again we have should plus our present tense verb form. So find and work are both present tense verbs. You should find a new job. He should work harder. So the speaker thinks these are good ideas. So these are positive statements, positive advice uh, bits, I guess. Um, let's compare this to some negative statements then. She shouldn't give up. She shouldn't give up. And you shouldn't eat so much junk food. You shouldn't eat so much junk food. So these two are expressing something the speaker thinks is a bad idea. So in the first sentence, she shouldn't give up. In other words, to give up is bad or giving up is a bad idea. In the second sentence, you shouldn't eat so much junk food is saying eating a lot of junk food is a bad idea. So here you'll notice maybe too, I've called this future. These are just kind of general life recommendations. I call it the future here because it's like saying from now on, from this conversation on, this is my advice for you. So maybe, especially in a sentence like this, you shouldn't eat so much junk food. Maybe the speaker is looking at someone eating a lot of junk food and they give this advice. You shouldn't eat so much junk food. Okay, so let's finish then with a couple of questions. So common questions. First one, what should I do? What should I do? A very common advice question. And second, when should we leave? When should we leave? So in native pace, I would say, what should I do? And when should we leave? So these are common questions. These are asking for advice in the future, here. So asking, what do you think? In other words, what's your opinion? What should I do? In other words, what do you think is a good idea for me for the future? And in the second sentence, when should we leave? What time do you think is a good time to leave in the future? So we can make these kinds of questions as well, giving um, or rather asking for future advice. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to using should 
for past tense statements and questions and for future tense statements and questions. I hope that it helped you. Of course, if you have any other questions or if there's something else you'd like to know about this grammar point, please feel free to let us know in the comments of this video. Also, if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you have not already, and check us out at EnglishClass101.com for some other things that can help you with your English studies. Thanks very much for watching this lesson and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.